Okay, hey guys, um, I'm back, and so this time, uh, this is another project I'm built. It's sort of halfway finished, I guess. I'll explain later. Anyway, what it is is an oscilloscope, and it runs completely on Arduino. Right now, I have this one set up to run on the Mega, but um, it'll probably ru it it will run on the Duo Milanove or Uno, I think. I'm not sure if the if the limit. It's 10,894 bytes. I'm not sure. I think that that's probably within the limit. Anyway, I have it running. Um, well, I don't have it running right now. I'm going to go through and explain the code. And then after that, um, show it working. Um, yep. So anyway, right here we just have the analog input pin. So this is where you put your signal to analog zero. Uh, this is just, I stole the code from something else. So this means nothing. The, um... Sensor value is the direct analog read, as in the number you get, you know, 0 to 123, or not 123, sorry, 1023. And then the output value is um, a value that, uh, uh, it, it basically, it's, it's a different version of the sensor value, sort of. I'll explain later. The serial begin, um, begins the serial that's uh, sent to the computer at 57,600 bytes per second, bits per second. Anyway, that's, that's what I found. Um, it's fast enough to get the insane amounts of data over to the computer, um, and it's uh, it's slow enough that it won't glitch up my computer, because my computer's really bad. So when I run it at the maximum bit rate uh, that USB will allow, if you go to the you know the menu, the serial monitor, and go to the maximum, that like locks up my computer. So this one works wonderfully. It transmits all the data over um, really nicely. Anyway, uh, so. Um, that's in the setup. The loop, what we have, this loop just goes over and over again. So basically the um, sensor value is equal, sorry. The sensor value is then um, equal, it basically, the sensor value is now the analog read of the analog input pin. And then this output, pin, what I was talking about earlier, is the map of the sensor value. So basically what you're doing is you're changing the 0 to 123 to 0 to 100. Um, so you're basically changing the scale. So the output value is now 0 to 100, 100 being 5 volts, 0 being ground, whereas before the sensor value was 0 being ground and 123 being 5 volts. Uh, the 100 is done because I can fit 100 characters on the screen lengthwise and still have plenty of room. Um, and if you haven't noticed that when you try to serially print something and the more characters you have going horizontally across the screen, the longer it takes. So I figure 100 gets it to about here on the screen, which is long enough to see the detail, but not too long. It takes up so much memory. Or, not memory, it takes too long to transmit. So basically here it is. If the output value is equal to zero, uh, print just one zero and ground. So basically if you see one zero on the screen to the left in the so serial print line, sorry, print line, meaning that it'll print it and then enter to the next line, which is very important. Remember the win, otherwise it won't work. If the output value is equal to one, put two zeros. Uh, two, three, zero, two, it'll be three zeros and so on until you get up to um, 50 in which case it'll print 50 zero, it'll print 51 zero, sorry and it'll also print 2.5 volts just to let you know that you're half the voltage I also have one where 3.3 volts is um, etc. So I'm sure you can figure out and also 5 volts and I'm sure you can figure out how it works uh, the code but basically when it's running it's just continuously printing a new line and um, you can see the graph so um, essentially what the way it works is that your voltage, uh, pretend that the axis is instead that this is your x-axis and this is your y-axis. So the left side of your screen is the x-axis and the top of your screen is the y-axis. Now, if you were to flip your screen sideways, then you would have the oscilloscope. Keep in mind this oscilloscope doesn't really have a constant time base. Um, it's close to five milliseconds between getting printed, but uh, it doesn't really have a constant time base because obviously it takes more time to put all of this to send it over and put it on the screen than it would to say put like this on the screen. So um, the less voltage you're viewing, the, um, the faster the numbers, the faster the zeros will appear on the screen. And if we go all the way to the end, you'll see this delay five is just to let the analog um, read um, settle down so that you don't get weird readings. Anyway. I'm yeah, so that's that's how it works essentially. Is the more zeros you see, the higher the voltage. So you can actually see the graph. Anyway, if I um run the serial monitor, I have my mega 
um, here already printing out data. It's connected to 5 volts. As you can see, it goes to 5 volts. Now, if I leave it floating, you can see the uh, graph go way over the place um, right now. So if we connect it to ground, you'll notice it just goes to ground. And if we connect it to 3.3 volts here, you can see that it's printing 3.3 volts. So obviously sometimes the signal varies, but almost pretty good. And um, that's your oscilloscope. You know, right now it's just floating, and I'm like tapping it with my finger. Anyway, if I put it, I can get. Uh, let's see, I'll put it on one side of an LED to see what voltage that gets. Okay, so that side of the LED is at ground. Now the other side of the LED is at that many zeros. Now if you were to count how many zeros there were, you could figure out the voltage, obviously. Um, because each each zero, what you do is, if you want to find the voltage, what you do is you count the zeros. I'm just going to leave it on 3.3 .3 volts. If you count the zeros, minus 1, then, um, let's see. So each zero is a hundredth of 5 volts, which is 0.2 volts, I believe. Anyway, it is a hundredth of, uh, so you multiply by that, and you can get, so, it, you know, each zero represents a hundredth of 5 volts, so find out what a hundredth of 5 volts is. I believe it's 0.2, but I, uh, I didn't really get a calculator to do that. And um, then whatever the hundredth of 5 volts is, you multiply how many zeros you have by that, but make sure you've minus one zero away first, and then you get your um, volt. Anyway, but you can see how on the screen you get a really good graphical representation of, of what's going on. So, you know. Like, if you needed a rough oscilloscope, this would do in a pinch. As you can see, it, it does indeed show voltage over time. If you were to look at it, say, you know, tilt your head on the screen, you can sort of see a rough graph appearing. It's, it's not great, but it's something. Anyway. That's um, that's my um, project. So enjoy it. Use it as your own rough oscilloscope. Keep in mind that time base isn't completely consistent, but it'll work in a pinch. I have not tried plugging it into audio signals yet, so that is left for somebody else to try out, I guess. So, uh, well, let me see if I can find an adapter that would let me get the audio signals. Um, no, don't have it with me. Anyway, sorry about that, but I'm not sure if it could view audio signals or not. Anyway, uh, that's the oscilloscope. Thanks for watching. Um, uh, if you think I did a bad job with this video, which has been pretty consistent for most of my videos lately, just comment. I'll make a new one. Hopefully that can uh, help explain it to you. So thanks for watching.